March 3, 2024. This is Christian College Professor Solange Martinez documenting racketeering, corruption, and uh, crimes against humanity by government employees, local, state, and federal government employees. Martone, returning your phone call from the Attorney General's office. How are you? Um, if uh, your best bet would be to uh, call me back and let me know when you have five or ten minutes uh, today or tomorrow. Let me know two or three times today or tomorrow when you have five or ten minutes uh, for us to chat, and we can um, uh, explore the question, the issue that you had uh, when you left your message. Again, this is Michael Martone. I'm an attorney with the Attorney General's office. I'm returning your phone call and. Um, you can call me back and leave me a couple, two or three good times for us to chat uh, when you have five or 10 minutes uh, available. My number is 860-808-5318. Again, 860-808-5318. Thank you. So let's try the phone number a sixteen eight oh eight fifty three eighteen. Uh I supposed to dial it from here, but uh, I guess uh, it, the hackers that the deep state mafia has uh took that feature away as they always do with many features of my phone. General's office. Um, good evening. This is Christian College Professor Solange Martinez. Michael Martone uh, called me the day before yesterday and left me a message. She said to leave him uh, two or three uh, times uh, when he can call me so we can um, talk for about five to ten minutes. So I'm calling him back uh, to let him know that the elderly disabled Christian medication for epilepsy was supposed to be dispensed uh, the 20th, 22nd of um, February. Uh, the pharmacies are still refusing to sell her the medication uh, as per the deep state mafia order. Uh, and we discussed this many times with the attorney general uh, and also uh this is the message that i want to give him to um michael martel um Ma michael marton he said yes okay. okay so i'm going to forward your call over to michael martel and can you say your name again i i didn't quite get it um this is and, and yeah this is solange okay. uh it's french esa sin sam o l a n G E Solange Martinez M A R T I N E Z as in zebra. Okay, Solange Martinez. Okay, so I'm going to forward your call over to um, Mike Martone. Thank you. Sure. Okay, um, calling your call. Thank you for calling. We will return to take your call in just one moment.
Hi, Marton. How are you? Oh, hi, Mr. Marton. Uh, I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I have about five minutes, and I just wanted to touch base with you um, and see how I might be able to assist. Yes, um, the pharmacy uh, pharmacists are still uh, committing the crime of refusing to sell uh, the medication, the epilepsy medication, a migrant headache medication to the elderly disabled Christian who refused to join the organized crime and help defraud the United States government with millions of dollars by uh, signing uh, falsified documents and um, enrolling in different uh, welfare agencies or welfare programs for which she does not qualify. So as retaliation, um, the pharmacists can were told not to second? sell her the medication. Can you, can you pause? So, so what exactly is the situation? Um, uh, who is this person who you're calling on behalf of? Um, of this is Luisa Oyarzun. Luisa Oyarzun is a, a United States citizen that was uh, not born in the United States, but she has been a citizen for more than 30 years. Uh, yeah. She worked for dozens of years of her life, paid her taxes, and uh, contributed into her government benefits. Now that she is chronically ill with two cancer okay, operations. Uh -huh. Is she from Connecticut? Is she from Connecticut? Yes, she's, she's in Connecticut. In the state of uh, Mr. Tong. Yes, William Tong. that? William Tong, okay. your attorney so, general. So, what's that? She's in the state of Mr. William Tong, the Attorney General. Uh, that's the office that, for which you work. Right. No, I, I know. Um, so she lives in Connecticut. Uh, she lives uh, uh, in a government subsidized Section 8 apartment for, uh, in a building for the elderly, the disabled, and the blind. Okay, and she's here in Connecticut, right? Yes, the um, landlords and the uh, building manager proposed to her to enter the organized crime and sign some uh, fraudulent documents uh, for her to okay, be... So, so what are you talking about organized crime? Um, can, can you be more yes. specific? Yes, uh, organized crime meaning that they um, have you uh, defraud the United States government by signing, signing you up for different welfare um, yeah. programs uh, for which you uh, don't qualify. And then they take, uh, they tell the government, we need um, $50,000 for this uh, elderly disabled person because we're going to uh, have her move, help her move um, a, every time she moves and she moves every uh, few weeks or so. But that's not uh, true. She has been living in the in this same apartment for the last four and a half years. Um, and so they also what tell her programs are they defrauding? the programs. What programs uh, well, to one of the programs is called uh, the Robin program. Uh, R-O-V-I-N-G. The Robin program is a welfare program um, that uh, people who move every few weeks or so because they are uh they have drug addiction problem problems or alcoholism programs or problems or both and because of their state of mind and their problems um with drug addiction and alcoholism they move every few weeks or so so in this program the government the united states government give the um welfare uh staff members um uh, maybe ten thousand dollars twenty thousand dollars or so to supposedly help people uh, move, uh, pay for their truck, uh, rent a truck, rent movers because the person is elderly and disabled, and rent, um, pay for the gas of the truck, uh, and also buy the furniture, new furniture for the elderly and the disabled because when you move, uh, many things break. So they tell the government, we need um, 20, uh, $30,000 to help this person move every few weeks or so. So they um, get the money from the government uh, through welfare, and the person in reality does not move. She has been living in uh, the same apartment for the, the same Section 8 apartment for the, uh, in the building for the elderly and the disabled and the blind for the last four and a half years. But they wanted her to sign documents saying that she had these problems and she moved and she refused because she's she's a christian 
and she uh, is not about to violate the seventh commandment of God, thou shalt not steal, and the eighth commandment of God, thou shalt not lie, uh, to get some extra money. So they got upset. They told her to uh, either quick practicing her religion and help them get the get into the organized crime and help them defraud the United States government or they were going to use her influence their influences um the landlord's influence the, uh, the building manager's influence uh with a local housing court uh to lie and say that she doesn't have a section 8 uh she's not um she's a, a month by month tenant and she doesn't have a lease and they were going to kick her out that way they were going to buy a verdict for the from uh, the local housing court so uh, okay. well, after for that a second, pause, for a second. pause uh, for a second please let me just make sure i understand what's going on so far so so in a nutshell um the current landlords who are folks who work for the department of housing and urban development i'm assuming um or they work for the city are essentially trying to uh, get her into this Robin program um, to defraud money. Am I understanding that right? Many programs. That's not the only one. They also wanted her to. They enrolled her actually in that program. Enrolled her in a program for uh, the elderly and the disabled, for people who are abandoned by their families, who have nobody, and who are on the streets. So they are also getting money from the uh, uh, government, from the USA government. Uh, supposedly because they're providing people who take care of her and who does uh, uh, everything uh, for her because she's abandoned, um, explo uh, exploded, uh, you know, uh, being prostituted or something like that. And um, she needs elderly protective services. And the building manager, Lori Caruso, was, uh, is the one that gives her her purse, give those people from the organized crime uh, her personal identifiable information so they can enroll her without her knowledge or consent. She also offered her a uh, hundred dollars, a uh, hundred dollars Walmart card to sign um, fraudulent papers for her. And she refused because she's a Christian. And so after, okay. so, uh, uh -huh. so, 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 so this complaint largely revolves around the fraud. Housing, um, the landlords and the folks who are involved in the housing that your um, your friend essentially is living in, that they want her essentially to agree to uh, engage in these applications, which are fraudulent, um, to lie about them. And there's all different types of app applications from the, program, the Robin program and others. Am I understanding that right? Uh, yes. One little thing. She's not my friend. She's my mother. And one okay, thing no. that they did was they, <laughs> they filed... Uh, a custody case for me and for her, and supposedly I am a severely retarded person with an IQ of 68 that cannot do anything for herself, and I am gravely ill. So I'm getting SSI in more than 3,000 uh, counties uh, around the country and getting a uh, SSD disability, social security disability, because since being a teacher and a college professor, I worked and paid a lot of taxes uh, into my government benefits. So they are also getting a custody uh, for her and for me because we uh, are severely retarded and we cannot uh, do anything for them for ourselves. And also um, with an IQ of 68. Also, um, I they also stole my stipend because uh, I belong to a program. We entered into a program called the um, AFL, Adult Family Living, which is a program um, that enrolls uh, people. It could be professionals uh, or non-professional people uh, and pays them uh, to be with their uh, elderly disabled parents and take care of them to avoid people, strangers, coming into uh, the elderly disabled homes and abusing them or, or even killing them, as has been the case in the United States for many years. So they created programs like that. They have not paid me um, my stipend for the last three years. So um, my mother uh, took, the, took them to court, to the, 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 social, the, the Department of Social Services to court, 
And uh, we um, consulted with several attorneys. They ended up saying, um, we need $10,000 to represent you, or you can uh, use your daughter, who is a college professor, and she knows what to do. So I ended up representing her because she doesn't have $10,000. She's 120% below the, the poverty level. And uh, she won the case against the, the Department of Social Services. After that, uh, the Department of Social Services sent a fake social worker to ask her if she was uh, intending to enforce the court order that orders them to pay uh, back her benefits, to pay her back her benefits, uh, her food stamps uh, and other benefits that were stolen, including cash, cash assistance. She said yes, because she needs her uh, government benefits for which she worked many uh, years of her life and paid into many years of her life. And a few days after that, they broke, they showed up here, broke down uh, the door saying that um, I was uh, kidnapping her and uh, that they um, interviewed you more than a, 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 uh -huh. you've got a lot of stuff going on here and it sounds like you've got complaints that are, that are targeted against multiple places and multiple people. Am I understanding that right? No, just the landlords and their associates and also the U.S. Marshals who have been landlords. serving serving a fake, um, a, how do you call it, fake uh, eviction notices to her, uh, claiming that she's not a Section 8 uh, tenant. She doesn't live in a Section 8 uh, building, and she's a month-to-month -month tenant without a lease, and uh, they want her to move. Okay, so, so a couple of things. Um, have, you contacted, have you contacted the, the programs that, that um, the Robin program and other programs that are being defrauded because those are the ones who essentially we need to be contacted directly. Have you contacted them? Uh, I, I'm not going to contact those programs because those those programs have uh, criminals working in them that came here to kill my mother and to kill me because we refused to give up our religion and help them defraud the United States government, which is a, 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 a crime, so by the, the way, thing. besides being a, a sin. So this is the thing. Um, our office, Attorney General's office, we run a hotline, you know, the justice hotline. We don't have any jurisdiction. We want criminal jurisdiction to investigate this. We don't have criminal jurisdiction to find So you need to go to the, um, you either need to go to the police, you need to go to um, perhaps the FBI, you need to contact the specific agency, Department of Housing and Urban Development, Senate Department of Housing, um, and the programs that administer are the agencies that administer those programs to essentially inform them that hey look this fraud is going on this is what's happening um does that make sense uh yes it makes sense what happened is that we already contacted hot uh the united states department of housing and urban development and the commissioner there is part of the deep state mafia that uh, is killing elderly disabled citizens and anybody who helped them when they don't uh, allow themselves to uh, become mafia members we also uh, had the chief of police, Fernando Spagnolo, recorded with hidden cameras, breaking down our door uh, and falsely accusing me of kidnapping my mother to be able to um, kidnap me and try to um, arbitrarily, uh, I mean, uh, extrajudicially execute me after he arbitrarily arrested my elderly disabled mother and myself and tried to kill us. And the FBI, we have reported this for many years, and they have not done anything. Basically, they did the same thing that they did with the gymnastic um, champions, uh, the 16 years olds that were being raped by their um, doctors, and they were uh, they falsified their the ch the children um, reports uh, in order to aid and abate the doctor and keep him out of jail. They had to go to Congress in order for the FBI. Um, people who falsified the reports to be held accountable for that. So these people have been uh, committing these um, crimes against humanities with total and absolute immunity. And um, we were legally advised to uh, report this to the Attorney General, William Tong, because the Attorney General, William Tong, is the one responsible to enforce the laws against the marshal, the USA Marshals, that have been serving her um, 
eviction notices that are fraudulent. And also, uh, the the uh, he's uh, he's in charge. He's charged with um, enforcing the laws against the court uh, staff members that are committing court fraud and illegally evicting that's not true. my mother. None of that's true. Yes, it's that's true because true. I checked it out. No, it's I can email it to you I if you want. I can email I you the the, the evidence if you want. Let me explain to you. I work for the attorney general's office. I'm an attorney. I've been here for many years. Mm -hmm. Our office does not have any authority or jurisdiction over the criminal laws. We do not have any authority or jurisdiction over the United States Marshals. We do not have any authority or jurisdiction over the Department of Housing and Urban Development or the enforcement of these, these programs. That's what we don't have jurisdiction over. So that's, that's, that's not true. Reason, but we don't. That's not true. You do. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm sorry, but I, I, um, if you don't want to believe me, and I'm telling you, no, uh, it's believe. not that I don't believe you. It's not. It's it's that I know it's true because I looked it up. I have the laws that says that the attorney general is the one that is in charge of uh, overseeing and enforcing the laws against the U.S. marshals that have been committing fraud and serving fraudulent papers. And also, uh, I know the, the I know that uh, there is uh, a civil uh, rights department within the attorney uh, the the attorney general's office because I was referred to that civil rights department by attorneys. I also uh, looked it up, and you do have a civil rights department. I also know that uh, when somebody commits a crime, the attorney general is the one that prosecutes that crime because I have seen them many times. I have seen that many times. So if you don't want to do rega uh, anything regarding these uh, crimes against humanity, that's okay. But uh, please don't insult my intelligence and tell me that you don't have jurisdiction when I know for a fact that you do have jurisdiction. Also, I have a friend uh, for many years. I have had a friend who is retired, who uh, was a prosecutor for 30 years, David Maldonado. And uh, he was the one also who told me to go where I went. And uh, you tell me to go to the FBI, to the Department of Housing, et cetera, et cetera. When your colleague, uh, Sandra Arena, told me that you do have a housing um, person that is uh, in charge of resolving the housing issues within the attorney general's office. So I know that you're lying. So, so first off, please, please don't, 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 um, I'm not lying to you. You don't have criminal jurisdiction. Please listen to me closely. The criminal jurisdiction that our office has, we have one little area of criminal jurisdiction. And I know because I prosecute those cases. And that involves essentially unregistered home improvement contractors, criminal. We have civil jurisdiction in some areas. We don't have civil jurisdiction over any of the federal programs. We don't have criminal jurisdiction or civil jurisdiction over any of the programs that you talked about. We have a housing department. The housing department doesn't oversee HUD necessarily, and we can't investigate criminal cases. Let me ask you, what did Sandy Arenas tell you when you spoke with her? Basically, she told me that she was not going to refer uh, her case to the uh, civil rights uh, division of the attorney general, and she was not going to help her in any way, shape, or form. Now, Sandra Arena is from the same country that the uh, people uh, in the building uh, that told my mother, Luisa Oyarsun, to stop uh, taking, to stop um, practicing her religion, or that she was going to see who she was messing with. Uh, from uh, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Okay, San Arenas is not from Puerto Rico. <laughs> yes, she is Puer so she's from Puerto Rico because uh, I I know uh, uh, her um, her name and her last name, and she is uh, from Puerto Rican descendants. She's not from Puerto Rico. She, what is anyway. she from? She's Irish? I'm not, I'm not sure. We or African? Where she's from. Because Sandra Arena is from Puerto Rico, and she has a, a Puerto Rican last name. 
I have many friends who okay. are Puerto Ricans and who told me I know that, have yeah, and who told me that uh, what they were doing to us was an abuse. Or maybe she's German. Can I get your first and last name just so I have it because I couldn't understand it when, when you first called? Solange Martinez. And it says here, you may report. Can uh, you tell your first name? Uh, uh, Solange, Esa Sin Sam, O L A N G E. Great, thank you. Martinez, um, and you know how to spell Martinez with a Z at the end. I do, I do. So, so this is the thing. Um, I'm sorry that you don't believe us. Um, Sandy Arenas um, I was absolutely right, um, and obviously, um, if she pretty much had told you that that we couldn't uh, assist, then then. Um, you know, there's nothing more than I can really share at this point. Um, your best bet, like I said, would be to go to these departments. Um, they have whistleblower complaints. Um, you've obviously contacted the FBI and law enforcement. Um, and like I said, I'm, I'm not I'm not sure how else I can be helpful. <laughs> you are not sure. I am sure. Uh, but if you don't want to assist her, uh, this... Crimes against humanities have been going on That's for the last four and a half years. You don't have criminal jurisdiction. Uh, it sounds like what you're talking about, the fraud that you're talking about, is criminal. Uh, and then the oversight that you're talking about. Uh, is, is One moment, I'm going to translate for, for my mother. Él dice que vaya al FBI o vaya a la policía. Dile que cuál que cuál es la que o oh, esos son los que. Ya yo le dije que yo fui al FBI. Una persona que de 72 años enferma va va a abrigar con ella. Ajá. Uh, she says that uh, we already contacted the FBI. We already told you that the chief of police is the um, deep state mafia uh, mafia hitman. Uh, he came here to uh, execute us twice after uh, my mother won a court case against the DSS commissioner for stealing more than uh, half a million dollars uh, worth of government benefits from her. I'm going to read you something that I'm looking at right now. Who oversees the U.S. Air Ma US Marshals? The U.S. Uh, Attorney General, the United States Marshals Service, uh, is a federal law enforcement agency in the United States. The Marshals Service serves as the enforcement and security arm of the United States federal ju uh, judici judiciary, although it is an agency of the United States Department of Justice and operates under the direct uh, under the direction of the United States um, Attorney General. That's not William Tong. You, um, so this is the thing I was trying to share with you before. There's a United States Attorney General at the federal level that that that's down in Washington D.C. And then there's each of the, well, most of the states have their own individual state attorney general. William Tong is not the United States Attorney General. William Tong is the Attorney General for the state of Connecticut. So that's right. That's right to the extent that it, that it involves the United States Attorney General. So if you want to contact the United States Attorney General, you could do that. That's a different person. Yes, I understand, but Sandra Arena told me that they uh, she was not going to refer her case to the uh, Civil Rights Division of the Attorney General's Office. Uh, so, so you do have a know. Civil Rights so Division. Mayor, the person who's the United States Attorney General is, is a person called Merrick Garland. He's totally different from uh, William Tong. And Merrick Garland may have divisions within his office, um, under the uh, Department, um, uh, the United States Department of Justice, um, which could potentially uh, investigate what you're talking about. But so, that's totally different, totally separate from, from my office, from William Tong's office. William Tong, and, and um, that, that's pretty much the, the distinction here. And I think that's where you're getting, um, where, where, where you're not necessarily connecting the dots. Yes, so but why didn't Sandra United Arena States? give me her number then? Whose number? Sandra Arena. Give you, why didn't she not give you who? Uh, why didn't she give me uh, Marley, uh, 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 Mary Gar uh, Garling's number? If um, she... I don't know, but I mean, he's the, he's the United States Attorney General, um, and he heads the United States Department of Justice, and he's the Chief Law Enforcement Officer of the federal government of the United States. So, yeah, all the stuff that you're talking about would go to the Fed. That's what I'm trying to tell you, like the... Um, 
the, the, the Department of Housing and Urban Development, that's the federal program. So they have their own kind of like like uh, whistleblower complaints. And obviously, going to the um, Attorney General of the United States of America is also an option there, too. But that's totally separate from our office. We have a small civil rights department that deals with very specific issues. Um, and, and if Sandy told you um, that, that, that that's not something that, that we do, then... I'm, I'm totally um, on board with her as well. No, so she told me that that's something that you do, but she will not refer my mother, who is... Uh, we don't have uh, jurisdiction in, in, in the cases that, that you're suggesting. So, um, I'm going to... You don't have... Uh, uh, you, you, you don't have the number for uh, Merrick uh, Garland? Uh, I, I am looking for it. Oh, okay. Give me a sec. I don't know if I have a number, but I'm going to see if I'm going to find out. I'm going to look for the number of the phone you have to call. Un señor que se llama Mary Garling, que es el oficial de eh, la agencia federal que regula a so, toda esta gente. Okay. She says okay. So here, okay. So here's a couple numbers I can give you. 202. 202. 514. 514. 2000. 2000. And that's the Department of Justice. That's their main line. Washington, D.C. Oh, that's the main number. You don't have his direct number. And there's, here's another number. It, it says it's the comment num the comment line. It's 202. Again, these are all um, Washington, D.C. numbers. 202-353-1555. Okay. Okay, I got it. Another that's thing, um, how is it that um, the... Uh, people who refuse to join the organized crime, the pharmacists of the United States can refuse to uh, uh, sell them their uh, epilepsy medication, migraine headache medication, and their cancer medication uh, in order for them to, to die without medication. Uh, is, it, is this not something that uh, uh, William Tong uh, deals with as the attorney general? Because that's a crime. They're not supposed to uh, refuse uh, to sell the medication to elderly disabled people who are epileptic and suffer from migraine headaches and things like that. They, they should be in jail. Unfortunately, I don't know the answer. My mother is saying that even in the Dominican Republic, who is a, a third world country, uh, they they cannot they will be in jail if, if the pharmacist refuse to sell the medication to uh, anybody that's a crime how come these these people I, I are doing I this i don't know who you have to talk with um, but again um, crimes you know maybe the united states attorney general um, again we don't have any criminal jurisdiction here you might want to contact the uh, state attorney's office perhaps uh, who is the state attorney? Uh, who is the state attorney for the state of Connecticut? Because I contacted uh, a woman by the name of Avery, and she basically said, "I'm not going to do anything uh, to enforce the laws against these criminals." I mean, if, if you're kind of hitting roadblocks, I mean, I, I don't know what else to tell you. Um, the state attorney, um, you spoke of Margaret, you said. Avery. Her name is Avery. She's African American. And I don't think that she likes Christians or Hispanics. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, let's see. Uh, I can give you the Chief State Attorney's number. It's 860-258-5800. But um, Solange, who, 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 who is that right person? Now. You said uh, the name is the state at uh, the state what? Uh, the chief state's attorney. Chief state attorney. Okay. And yeah. what is what is I mean, his the, name? The head. There's a bunch of there's a bunch of people who are under him, but the person the head person is uh, it just changed it. Uh, I think it's uh, Patrick Griffin. Okay. How do you spell his first name? This is a question you want my best. Patrick Griffin. Oh, Patrick. Okay, Patrick. Yeah. Patrick Griffin. I'm wishing you my best. 
good luck um, and, um, and, and be well. Many blessings. God bless you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, and have a pleasant rest of the day. God bless you. You too. Thank you for nothing. What he did not say, uh, Mr. Uh, Marlon, I believe her, his name is, what he did not say is that the Attorney General represents the DSS Commissioner who uh, lost the court case against my elderly disabled mother. Uh, well, my mother uh, uh, filed the court case against him and she won the case when I represented her. What he did not say is that the attorney general represents the DSS commissioner. So obviously they have a conflict of interest and they're not going to help her in any way, shape or form in violation of the United States Constitution, which says that the government and the government employees are there to protect the civilians not to steal from them or to send a hitman to kill them.